Hey guys, in this video, the lovely Mr. B is going to be working through lots of examples of gradients and the information we can get from them. This is all for your A-level maths. Now, there are lots of examples here. Work through slowly and calmly for you. If you want more practice questions to really help solidify this skill, then they're all waiting for you over on my website. In the differentiation video, differentiation gives you the gradient of a line. So if we have the line y equals x squared plus 1, then differentiate from the difference in y over the difference in x will give you an expression for the gradient. Now, the way we differentiate is that we take the power, we take the coefficient on the number. Now, if there isn't a coefficient, then that's 1, and we multiply them. So 2 times 1 is going to give us 2. Once we've done that, we can take the power and we take one away from it. So you can think that, you know, you've kind of used up one of the powers almost to do the multiplication. So x to the power of 2 becomes x to the power of 1. And of course, if this is the power of 1, then you don't need to write the power. Now, you can do the same thing with a plus 1. The thing with a plus 1 is that, effectively, that's 1x to the power of 0. You don't have any x terms. And so we do multiplication, you use 0 times 1, which is 0. And so you multiply by 0, you get 0. So why bother writing anything down for it? It's going to give you 0. So the gradient is 2x. Now, that's not all, because we've got an expression for the gradient, 2x, but we actually want to find the gradient at a specific point on the line. And that point is at negative 2 Five. Now, negative 2, 5, the coordinate is made up of an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So if we are saying that our gradient is equal to 2x, then we can substitute in our x value. That'll be two lots of negative 2, which is negative 4. So at the point, negative 2, 5, on the curve y equals x squared plus 1, the gradient is 4. That's the steepness of the curve at that point. So let's look at another example. Our line is y equals negative x squared plus 3. And we want to differentiate it to find the gradient, the difference in y over the difference in x. So again, we're going to take power. We'll take the coefficient on the letter the powers on. If there's no number, then it's be a 1. And then we multiply those together. So 2 times negative 1 will give us negative 2. Then with the x, we look at the power and we reduce it by 1. So x to the power of 2 becomes x to the power of 1. And again, if it's power 1, you don't need to write the power. Then plus 3, if you differentiate just a number on its own, it's going to end up being 0. Because you're going to multiply it by the power on the x. There is no x. You're multiplying it by 0, and it's gone. Now, again, we have an expression for the gradient, negative 2x, but we don't have the actual value of the gradient. So we need to look at a point on the line. We're looking at the gradient at negative 5, negative 22. Which, again, makes up an x and a y-coordinate. So if the gradient is equal to negative 2x, then we're going to substitute in negative 5 for x. Negative 2 times negative 5, it's actually going to be with a positive 10. Double negative, so negative symbols cancel out. So the steepness of the curve at the point negative 5, negative 22, the steepness is 10. So let's increase the difficulty and look at a more complicated curve. So y equals 4x squared minus 7x plus 5. So, again, we're going to look at one term at a time here because we've got three different terms. So we've got the 4x squared term, we've got the negative 7x term, and we've got the plus 5 term. So we're going to differentiate each one of these one at a time. So the difference in y and the difference in x, the gradient, is going to be equal. So, again, we're going to take the power and multiply it by the coefficient at the front. 2 times 4 is 8, and reduce the power by 1. x squared becomes x. Then do the same thing with negative 7x. So multiply the power by negative 7. See, there's no power there, so it's effectively a 1 times negative 7, which gives us negative 7. We then reduce the power by 1. So power 1 becomes power 0. And so if it's power 0, then there isn't going to be an x term. Then looking at the 5, again, there's nothing to multiply the 5 by. So 0 times 5 is going to give us 0. So that gives an expression for the gradient, which is 8x minus 7. So where do we want to know where the gradient is? We want to know at 2, 7. So if the general formula for the gradient is that the gradient is equal to 8x minus 7, then at the point 2, 7, replace x with 2, and we've got something to work out. So 8 times 2 is 16. 16 take away 7 is 9. The gradient of the curve at the coordinate 2, 7, the gradient is 9. Again, that's how steep the curve is 
at that point. Our next example is y equals x cubed plus 7x plus 1. So again, we're going to differentiate to find the gradient, and we're going to look at each term one at a time. So we're going to look at the first term, x cubed, then we'll look at the second term, plus 7x, then we'll look at the third term, the plus 1. So looking at the first term, uh, we're going to bring down the 3, which equals 3x, and reduce the power by 1. For the second term, We've got 7x, that's going to become 7. So effectively, we multiply the power 1 by 7 to get 7, and then x to the power 1 becomes x to the power 0, which means we don't have an x term. And then the final number, the plus 1, that just goes away because we're going to multiply it by 0 because there is no x term. So recognize a pattern here where if you've got something which is just an x, you lose the x. If you've got something without an x, you lose a term entirely. So you don't really need to think those through. So now we have an expression for the gradient. The gradient is 3x squared plus 7. Now we want to know how steep the line is at the point 2, 23. We've got an x and y coordinate, so we substitute in the x coordinate. That'll be 3 lots of 2 squared plus 7. Make sure you use bit mass here, we're going to do the power first. 2 to the power 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 plus 7 is 19. So this is the steepest one yet. The steepness of the curve when x is 2 is 19. For our last example like this, we have y equals negative 3x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4. So again, we've got multiple terms to differentiate, and we do them separately. So we have the first term, the second term, and the third term. So looking at our first term, we're going to have 3 multiplied by negative 3 is negative 9, and the power on the x, the 3, becomes a 2, goes down by 1. Same thing with the second one. So the power 2 multiplied by the 3 will give us a 6. And then the power will go down by 1 from 2 to 1. Then the last term is just a number term, so we differentiate that. It's going to go away. So the gradient is equal to negative 9x squared plus 6x. Now, we want to know what the gradient is at the point on the curve, negative 1x. So we substitute in the x coordinate. It was negative 9 times negative 1 squared plus 6 times negative 1. Now again, use bit mass to the squared first. Negative 1 squared is a positive 1, and positive 1 times negative 9 is negative 9, and then 6 times negative 1 is going to give us negative 6. So altogether, negative 6 and negative 9 together will give us negative 15. So again, we've got an even steeper line at this point. Gradient is negative 15 at the point negative 110. But because it's a negative gradient, it means that the lines go in the opposite direction. So looking along the line from the left to the right, this line is going downwards from left to right, rather than the previous one, which was positive, which were going upwards from left to right. So now we're confident with getting the gradient by differentiating, we need to look at a few definitions. So let's imagine we've got a pair of axes and we have a curve. Now, so with this curve, there's a couple of things we need to look at. So the first thing is the tangent to the curve. So if you choose a point on the curve, the tangent is a line that touches the curve only at that point. And it works exactly the same way it works on circles. So the tangent to a circle is the same concept. So that's the tangent. Now, the next thing to look at is something called the normal. So again, I'm going to take the same graph, we're going to have a line going through it, and we'll choose the same point. So the next thing is the normal. Now, if we take the tangent to be the line that kind of only touches the curve at that one point, in kind of this direction, the normal is the line that's at a right angle to it. So it has to be a right angle, that's the most important thing here, and we call it the normal. So you even think that, you know, this is also a line that touches the curve, you know, probably at one point. I mean, you can see it is going to touch uh, the back of the curve as well. But the difference here is it intersects, it goes through it. The tangent doesn't go through the curve, it just touches it at one point. So we need to know what these two things are. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find the gradient of the curve. So just like before, y is equal to x squared plus 8x. So the gradient, dy by dx, x squared will become 2x, and 8x will become 8. Now, once we've differentiated this, we can see that we've got the, uh, the point of the tangent. And so the point of the tangent is at negative 7, negative 7. So let's find the value of the gradient at the tangent. So if the gradient is equal to 2x plus 8, then if x is negative 7, we have two lots of negative 7, plus 8. So 2 times negative 7 is negative 14, and negative 14 plus 8 is going to give us negative 6. So the gradient 
of the curve at that point is negative six. Now, with a tangent and an arm, what this means is negative six is the gradient of the tangent. So what we've been doing all along with the easy questions was finding the gradient of the tangent. Now with the normal, you can see the normal is at a right angle. So with the normal, we want the reciprocal of this, the negative reciprocal, to get the gradient of the normal. So the gradient of the normal for this would be one sixth. We're gonna save that for the hard questions. So now we know the gradient of the tangent, we can actually work out what the tangent is. So it's gonna be a straight line. So it's gonna be y equals mx plus c. And we worked out the gradient, m. y equals negative six x plus a number. And so what we want is, we want to know where the line that makes up the tangent crosses over the y-axis. We want the y-intercept to finish off the equation. And all we need to do is substitute our x and y coordinates on the tangent. We've got our negative seven, negative seven. So that would give us negative seven is equal to negative six, multiplied by negative seven plus c. So we can start to work this out. So negative seven is equal to negative six times negative seven, which is going to be positive 42. And then we can take 42 away from both sides. And that will give us that negative 49 is equal to c. So now we can write out the equation of the tangent. It's going to be y equals negative six x take away 49. So to find the equation of the tangent, we just do an extra step of substitutions to work out what y equals mx plus c is going to be. So our next example is y is equal to 3x squared plus 8x minus 9. So we're going to differentiate it to find the gradient. That will give us 2 times 3 is 6x plus 8. And then notice here how quickly we're in differentiation. We're seeing 8x, straight away that's 8. I'm seeing negative 9, straight away that's going away. These patterns always work out. And it's only when the uh, the power is a 2 or above that you've kind of got to pay attention and do a multiplication. So we know now that the gradient is equal to 6x plus 8. Now for the gradient of the tangent, we need to look at where it intersects the tangent. And that's at negative 2, negative 13. So again, we've got an x and a y coordinate. You'll need the x coordinate for this part. So it's going to be 6 multiplied by negative 2 plus 8. So 6 times negative 2 is going to give us negative 12, and negative 12 plus 8 will give us negative 4. So we've worked out the gradient. Now we substitute it into y equals mx plus c. So that's y is equal to negative 4x plus c. So to find it the c, we substitute in our x and y coordinates. y is negative 13. x is negative 2. So negative 13 is equal to negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. Take 8 away from both sides, and we get that c is negative 21. So we can write down our final answer. y is equal to negative 4x take away 21. The next example is y equals negative 3x squared take away 7x plus 9. So let's differentiate it to find a gradient. So 2 times negative 3 will be negative 6 and reduce the power. Then we've got negative 7 and the 9 goes away. So our gradient is negative 6x take away 7. We want the gradient at the tangent which touches the curve at 2, negative 17. So we're substituting in x for 2. That means the gradient is negative 6 multiplied by 2, take away 7. And negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. And negative 12, take away 7, will be negative 19. So the tangent will be really, really steep at that point of the curve. So the equation of the tangent will be in the form y equals mx plus c. We've just figured out what m is, it's negative 19. To work out c, let's substitute in our values at x and y. y is negative 17 and x is 2. That means that negative 17 is equal to negative 19 times 2, which would be negative 38. So we can add 38 to both sides to get c. Negative 17 plus 38 gives us 21. So we can write down a final answer. Y is equal to negative 19x plus 21. Next example is Y equals X cubed, take away 6X squared plus 1. So this time this one's a cubic, but it's going to work the same way. You can still have tangents to cubic curves as well. So we differentiate it to find the gradient. So I'll bring down the 3, multiply the 2 by the 6, reduce the powers each time. So the 3 becomes a 2, the 2 becomes a 1. And then you know, differentiate normal numbers and just go away. So our gradient can be equal to 3x squared take away 12x. So we need to find an x coordinate substituted. We've got one where the tangent touches the curve. So x is going to be equal to negative 1. 
Now this time we've got X in here twice, so we substitute it in twice. Use bid mass, so do the uh, squaring first. So negative one squared is one, multiplied by three gives us three. And then negative 12 times negative one is gonna be a positive 12. So that's gonna give us a gradient of 15. Then we substitute that into the equation of a straight line, y equals mx plus c. And we know the gradient m is 15. So find c, so we're using the x and y coordinates, y is negative six, and x is negative one. That gives negative six, is equal to 15 times negative one, so negative 15. And so to get what c is equal, we need to add 15 to both sides. So negative six plus 15 gives us nine. So our final answer is y equals 15x, plus nine to the equation of the tangent. And the last example for the equation of the tangent is the curve y equals negative seven x cubed plus nine x squared plus eight. So again, we differentiate. So three times negative seven is negative 21, reduce the power. Two times nine is 18, reduce the power, and the eight is gonna go away. So the gradient is equal to negative 21 x squared plus 18 x. We want x and y values, so we can look at the, the tangent point, which is 110. So x is going to be 1. The gradient is negative 21 multiplied by 1 squared plus 18 times 1. So 1 squared is 1 multiplied by negative 21 is negative 21. And 18 times 1 is 18. Negative 21 plus 18 will give us negative 3. Substitute that into the equation of a line, y equals mx plus c, because the tangent and normals are always straight lines. So we know it's y is equal to negative 3x plus c. Substituting x and y to figure out what c is. So y is 10, x is 1. That gives us that 10 is equal to negative 3 plus c. So we add 3 to both sides, and we're going to get that c is equal to 13. So our final answer is y equals negative 3x plus 13. Now, for the third question, so we're not going to be finding the equation of the tangent. We're going to find the equation of the normal. We follow the same process. So we have our curve, y equals x squared minus 7x, and we differentiate it to find the gradient. Bring down the 2, 7x becomes 7. And so now we have an expression for the gradient. Gradient is 2x minus 7. So we substitute to find the gradient at the point 3, negative 12. So x is 3, we've got two lots of 3, take away 7, which is 6 take away 7, which is going to be negative 1 for the gradient. So we substitute that into the equation for a line, y equals mx plus c. This time, we're substituting negative 1 for the gradient. Then we're going to be getting the equation for a tangent. Now, we actually want the equation for the normal. So we have to make an adjustment here. Now, it's all about the normal being at a right angle to the tangent. So what we found is for the tangent. For the normal, it's going to be the negative reciprocal of that. So we take the number, negative one. So to take the negative reciprocal, we do two things to it. Firstly, we're gonna make it negative. That'll give us negative, negative one. And the second thing is to take the reciprocal of a whole number, you make it a fraction over one. So altogether, the double negative gives us a positive, and one divided by one is one, so that'll give us a positive one. And so now we've got the gradient for the normal. So now we can substitute, substitute that in. Y is equal to one X plus C. Substituting Y and X, so X is three, Y is negative 12. So negative 12 is gonna be equal to one multiplied by three plus C. So that'll be negative 12 is equal to three plus C. So take three away from both sides and C is gonna be negative 15. So now we can write down our final answer. So the final answer is going to be y equals 1x take away 15. So the only change here is take the negative reciprocal of the gradient for the gradient of the normal. The next example is y equals x squared minus x plus 8. So again, we differentiate it, bring down the 2, and negative 1x will become negative 1, and a plus 8 is going to go away. So the gradient, and this is the gradient for the tangent, is going to be 2x minus 1. So if we take x to be 1, then that's going to be 2 lots of 1 take away 1. So a gradient is going to be 2 take away 1, which is 1. Now again, this is for the tangent. So for the gradient of the normal, we're going to take the negative reciprocal of 1. So 1 divided by 1 is 1, and then make it negative. So now we can substitute into y equals mx plus c. So that'll be y is equal to negative 1x plus c. And we know that y is 8, and x is going to be 1 at the point where the normal hits the curve. That gives us 8 is equal to negative 1 
plus c, add one to both sides, and c is nine. So our final answer is y is equal to negative one x plus nine. So now let's look at some more complex examples. So we've got y is equal to 4x squared plus 5x minus 1. So we need to differentiate it. 2 times 4 is going to give us 8 and reduce the power by 1. 5x becomes 5 and negative 1 is going to go away. So the gradient is going to be 8x plus 5. So we've substituted in the x coordinate that's going to give us x is negative 1. So 8 lots negative 1 plus 5. That's going to be negative eight plus five, which all together will be negative three. And again, this is for the tangent. So what's it going to be for the normal? So for the normal, take the negative three, we are gonna make it negative and we're gonna make it a reciprocal. That means we're gonna put it as a fraction, one over. It's gonna be negative, negative one over three. We've got a double negative, so it's gonna be a positive third. Again, we're doing two things. We're reversing the sign on it, so it's negative already, it becomes positive. If it's positive, it becomes negative. And we're changing whole numbers into fractions by putting them over a numerator of one. If it's already a fraction, then you flip it upside down. So now we can substitute if y is equal to mx plus c for a straight line. So y is equal to a third of x plus c. Substituting y and x, y is negative two and x is negative one. So that's going to give us negative two is equal to a negative third plus c. So then if we add one third to both sides, we're going to get a negative one and two thirds for c. So our final answer is going to be y is equal to one third x take away one and two thirds. Our next example is a cubic curve, but again, it's going to be the same method because these have tangent normals as well. So y equals two x cubed, take away eight x squared, take away x. So first we differentiate for the gradient, 3 times 2 is 6, reduce the power by 1. 2 times 8 is 16, reduce the power by 1. And then an x is going to become a 1. So now we've got an expression for the gradient. It's 6x squared minus 6x minus 1. And we're going to put in x is equal to 2 because that's where the tangent and the normal crosses the curve. 6 lots of 2 squared take away 16 lots of 2. So altogether, 2 squared will be 4, and 4 times 6 is going to be 24. 16 times 2 is 32, and we're taking away the 1. So we can work all that out. So 24 take away 32, take away 1 is going to be negative 9 for the gradient. But again, this is the gradient for the tangent. We want the gradient for the normal. Now, it might be useful to label this. Let's just label this tangent. So the examiner knows what you're doing if you make a mistake. Now let's look at the normal. So if the gradient of the tangent is going to be a negative 9, the negative reciprocal, the negative becomes positive, and 9 becomes 1 over 9. So now we can substitute that in. We want y is equal to mx plus c. So that's going to be, we substitute everything in, y is negative 18, m is going to be a ninth, x is 2, and then it's plus c. So we work this out, we're going to find out what c is. That will leave with negative 18 is equal to 2 ninths plus c. So we can take 2 ninths away from both sides to get negative 18 and 2 ninths is equal to c. So now we can write down our final answer. It's y is equal to the gradient, 1 ninth x. And then we have the c, which is negative 18 and 2 ninths. So that's the equation of the normal to the curve at the point to 18. Our last example is y is equal to negative x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4. So we differentiate. 3 times is a known number will be a 1. So 3 times negative 1 will be negative 3. Reduce the power by 1. 2 times 2 is 4. Reduce the power by 4. And then whole numbers I'm going to differentiate to anything. That gives us our gradient, which is negative 3x. So x is going to be negative 1 squared plus 4 lots of negative 1. So we work that out. Negative 1 squared is a positive 1. Positive 1 times 3 will be negative 3. 4 times negative 1 will be negative 4. So negative 3 take away 4 is negative 7. Again, this is for the tangent. That means for the normal the gradient is going to be the negative version of that. It's the negative version of 7, and it's going to be 1 over it. It's going to be the negative reciprocal. So it's going to give us a positive 1 seventh. So next we have y is equal to mx plus c, and we substitute. y is negative 1, m is a seventh, 
x is negative 1, and we're adding on to c. That'll be negative 1 is equal to negative 7th plus c. So we need to add 1 7th to both sides. That's going to give us a negative 8 7th is equal to c. So now we can write down our final answer. y is equal to, the gradient is 1 7th, and c is negative uh, 6 7ths.